Hi, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and welcome to the Polaris XL Build Project, Part 9. It came back on. Okay, a couple of small jobs I just need to get to here. One is I've got to glue the two halves of the rudder together. Probably use some CA glue for that. That stuff right there. And then I've got to glue this around the servo holes on the bottom. That's these holes right here, but on the bottom of it. And then I want to fill in this hole where the wires are coming through with a little bit of this uh, latex caulk with silicone right there. So those are three little jobs I got to do. Okay, so I've glued the two halves together. Basically, I just took this glue, I'll put the cap on it, and I ran a bunch of uh, glue around the edges, and then went down the middle, just putting glue like this, and then stuck the two halves together. And I have the slot for the horn right here on the left side, so that'll be over here on the left side, the way it fits, because that's where the horn is going to go. And, of course, I'm going to have to sand a little bit on the leading edge here. Not too much because this is wide back here already. So I just need to sand a little on the leading edge. But probably a lot, on the, uh, a lot of taper will have to be sanded into the trailing edge. Okay, so for this part I'm going to use foam tack so I can slide this around a little bit. But it's got to go down in this hole. got to sit right like that. I hope you can all see that, how that goes. Okay, so I'm going to put a little foam tack on there. Just going to go around the holes with some foam tack first. And then I'm going to put some on the piece. Like that. And the foam tack lets me slide it around a little bit so that uh, I can get it in position better rather than use CA. Okay, so it's in there. I might take it off once and let it tack up and put it back, but that's basically all there is to it. Okay, now I'm doing the fast dry latex caulk with silicon. And that's this stuff right here that I got from the hardware store. It's DAP. And what I'm doing is just, uh, I've lifted up the wires a little bit and just putting some down in this hole. Okay, now I'm going to pull the wires back through. Let's do that. Pull them back through. Because that's the way they'll be like that and that pulled the uh, the dap down into the wiring there and into the foam now I'm going to put dap on top get it down in there fill up the hole all right and I'll just let that dry. All right, we're back, and the dap has dried. It's basically dried overnight. And I've run the wires through, made some holes here, and brought the wires up to the top. Now, I want to talk about the servo locations. What I did was, instead of putting the aileron servo on the bottom, in other words, having the horn on the bottom, I mounted it on the top. And I had to go ahead and cut one layer of foam out and rest it on the pan that's underneath, the little piece of foam we glued underneath. And uh, that lowered it down enough so that now it doesn't hit when I glue the top on. It won't be in the way of anything. So I'm going to have my control rods on top instead of on the bottom for the aileron servo. Just being a little different there. 
and I'm going to have the rudder servo the way it is in the instructions facing down so that the rod will be underneath the control rod. Okay now let's take a look at the bottom. So here is the bottom and as you can see the uh, servo for the ailerons is facing towards the top so there's no control horn here and I kinda like that better because it doesn't get in the way of the wiring at all that way. The rudder servo is just fine where it is. The wires are fastened down here so there's plenty of room underneath the horn and it's only on one side so I could run the wires for the motor over here. If you look at the directions, if you look at this page of the directions or the uh, instructions, the build instructions, you'll see that with the servo for the aileron on the bottom it's very close to the wiring. I didn't really like that and also for the purpose of the video I like it better on top. So let's go back to the top and at the top we have the wiring for the servos all coming out right here. There's the aileron and rudder servos right here, these two, and then we have the longer one here that comes from the elevator. And that will all be going into my flight controller. Well, I didn't want to bore you with all the details, but I decided to laminate the top and bottom of the wings too, and especially right around where the, uh, the ailerons are going to hinge. So I'm doing all of that right now, just laminating the top and bottom of the wings. It takes maybe a half hour to do, so I'm not going to record it all. Got this side done already. Okay, just laminated the rudder. Got that laminated all sides, top and bottom. And of course the rudder goes on right here in the back. And now I think I'm going to laminate this pedestal part right here that holds up the nacelle. Basically I'm laminating everything I can that where the decals will go too. So the edges of the wings and up here on the pedestal and along the sides have been laminated. So the decals will go on really nicely as well as be easy to clean. Lamination is easier to clean. So that's enough lamination for now. I have run out of the lamination. I had to order some more from Aloft Hobbies. So I'm getting ready to hinge the rudder onto the vertical stabilizer and I'm using some Dubro pin hinges. I've just cut some slots to uh, fit the Dubro hinges into the rudder and the vertical stabilizer. And this is the hinges I'm using right here. It's catalog number 117. And they look like this right here. I'll take one out. There's one right there. And they're called nylon hinges. Hinge pin locked in place. So what I do is just take an X-Acto blade and cut a slot and then I'm going to glue the pin hinges in with some of this uh, foam tack right here. Just put a little bit on the front edge and then when I push it in it'll kind of smooth it out over the whole surface of the hinge. So just putting a little bit right here on the front edge. Don't want to get any foam tack on the hinge itself on the pin. Alright. Now we just slide it into the slot which I already pre-cut. So what I do is just put a little foam tack on the front edge of the hinge right here. Don't want to get any on the pin. I got a little bit of... okay. There we go. Now, I'm going to slide it into the slot like that. But it would be nice to get the other part of the hinge at the top, get the head of the pin at the top. There we go, like that. Now, let's get it in there part way and then what I do is rub off any excess glue that's oozing out there usually end up with some Kleenex on my fingers. 
but just get that glue out of there so it doesn't get on the hinge and then push it in the rest of the way. And this is just a grease pan I used on the foam to mark the position. I'll just rub that off. There we go. Now we got the two pin hinges. Okay, now I've just test fitted the hinges into the vertical stabilizer. And I'm going to put some glue on both of them. Again, just on the front edge. Like right there. On both of them. Okay, now. Let's get them in the slots. I've already pre-cut the slot, push them in part way, and now the glue is starting to ooze out of the slots. So what I want to do is wipe off any excess, both sides, and this is important because if it gets on the hinge, it will bind the hinge up. So. We don't want to do that. Alright, now push them in the rest of the way. And now we got a nice rudder. <laughs> 